Hey everybody! Today we're going to talk about disk detainer locks. Now there are all sorts of disk detainer locks out there, just like there are all sorts of pin tumbler locks out there, and lever locks, and so on and so forth. So, what we're going to use through all three pieces of this video is the Apis Plus 8850. Um, this is a pretty straightforward disk detainer mechanism. Everything that goes on here should make pretty clear sense, and you can use these simple building locks to understand more complicated disk detainer locks further down the line. So, uh, rather than a key that runs along the bottom of a series of pins, instead the keys in our disk detainer lock will actually run through the disks, through the tumblers, rotating each of them until they line up appropriately, and then a sidebar can drop into place. Don't worry, we'll look at that close up. But our basic components are the key, of course. Now, again, this is an ABUS, and the different angles that are cut into the key are the bidding of this lock. Just like a pin tumbler lock, the cuts of the key correspond to a series of numbers, in this case 6544513, and the angles cut into the key actually correspond directly to the position of the gate on the outside of the disks. The higher the number, the shallower the cut on the key, and the further the gate is from north. The lower the number in the bidding, the deeper the cut, and the closer the gate will be to north. We also have spacers, which are completely open on the inside, and have the gate sitting directly north, where we'll find that sidebar. So, with the improper key inserted into the lock, you'll see that many of the disks are rotating to the incorrect positions. Some of the gates are rotating past the sidebar, some aren't rotating far enough, but either way it doesn't open. But when, you, when we insert the proper key, every gate will line up and the sidebar can drop into place. But let's have a closer look at all of this. One of the nicer features of these particular padlocks is the double ball mechanism. A lot of padlocks have a sprung locking dog and this means that you can just put a small piece of metal in there and push the locking dog out of the way and open the shackle up without ever touching the lock. But with a double ball mechanism, you can't shim it, you can't displace those ball bearings, because that's just metal on metal on metal, with no other place to go. The other important feature of these locks are the zero disks. Rather than every disk interacting with the sidebar, Instead, just the first and last disc are able to rotate so far that they collide with part of the plug that applies pressure to the sidebar, and the sidebar is then dragged through a tapered chamber which deposits it directly into the channel created by the aligned gates. The zero disc is going to be very important in the picking section. That's the basic idea, but as I said, they do get much more complicated than that. In particular, you want to have a look at the Abloy ProTech. Abloy were one of the first to come out with this sort of design a hundred years ago, and uh, definitely perfected that. So, have a look at that, and up next in the videos, picking these.